JD, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, please hit like. If you want me to do any watch work for you, then email me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. jdwatchservice at gmail.com. I'll put that up so you can see the email address and just send me an email. Make sure you tell me what the problem is. Also send me a picture of the watch itself. Open the back and send me a picture of the movement as well so I can look up that movement number. Um, I don't work on European watches. I work on North American pocket watches. Um, and I do do some watches. I just said do-do. Oh my god. But I do do some watches as well. But it's got to be a special thing. It's got to be your great-grandfather's something or other. So email me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. I do this as a hobby, but I've been doing it for many years. So thanks a lot, and let's get it going. Hey, I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe. To my channel i've almost got 10,000 viewers which is really cool i think it's a monumental level that stuff kind of happens at. i'm not sure what it is but stuff kind of happens there so please subscribe if you're on this channel and hit like and share it with your friends this is primarily a watch repair channel primarily pocket watches although i do work on watch watches and i'm going to be doing a very interesting hairspring adjustment excuse me, in the future. So I like to make this channel real so I don't do a lot of editing to cut out stuff, just like when I just almost burped. Um, I try to make it as real as possible, and I also show if I'm making mistakes or whatever, I also show those as well so so the watchmakers out there can, can um, understand the thought process of repairing a watch and also when you've got problems repairing a watch, what do you do, right? So that's why I make it more real and not a lot of editing so so that's it um, today I've got a very interesting uh, pocket watch here this is a pocket watch that's in a salesman's case so here's the watch in a salesman's case I just threw it into uh, one of my watch containers here so and I, it's ready to go with the one exception um, I don't trust it so I did some adjustments of the pallet fork on this watch. Let me take this out here for a second. So right under here, um, there's a pallet fork and I don't trust, you see how that's stuck there? I don't trust that that pallet fork will work. Um, I shellacked the base of the pallet fork where the dart is that interacts with the roller table. And I just don't trust it. So I ordered a new pallet fork and I got it from Dave's watch parts. So Dave's, I didn't, did not put the front on this yet. So I got it from Dave's watch parts and Dave's a pretty cool dude. Didn't put the back on either. <laughs> That's the value of rubber bands. So, so I want to strip this watch down again and put in the pallet fork. So let me show you what the pallet fork looks like in its container. This is a pallet fork as I received it. And have a look at this. Let me move this out of the way a bit. And there it is. It's a Waltham pallet fork. Look at the size of that thing. So this box came in the mail and my wife was like, what's this? And could have, they have used a smaller box perhaps? So this is why the shipping was not cheap on this because he wanted to make sure the pallet fork was not damaged in its shipping. So my hope here is that it's the right pallet fork and it fits in the watch and I can finally complete this watch and then send it back to the owner. So so let's get on with the repair. I'm just setting up my Myers number 58 movement holder. I had a small uh, holder on the inside here because I was working on a, uh, what was it? Not a TSO. It was a Tudor. A Tudor. A ladies Tudor watch. I still have work to do on that watch to uh, figure out how to straighten out that hairspring. But I'm going to use this to actually hold this movement so I can take the balance off and then take the um, pallet fork out and replace it with a new pallet fork so let's get on with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the hands up at 12 o'clock so pull that up and then adjust these hands so they're at 12 o'clock like that and then uh, I'll be able to hold the watch like this as I take it out so let's get a glove on here and I know I do wear gloves for certain jobs. When I take it apart to wash it, I typically don't wear a glove because I'm going to be rinsing it and washing it and rotocoing it and everything else. So, 
And my fingernails have gotten longer again for guitar playing, which is excellent because I love using that as well for watch work. So here's the watch here. Now the pallet fork I have in there now, uh, that's in the back here, it's, uh, it works, let's say, but I don't trust my shellacking because I put some shellac underneath the dart that interacts with the uh, roller table, uh, the guard finger, some people call it. Um, so I need to remove this this movement here very carefully and I need to do it well there we go well my fingers are out of the way so I'll take two fingers and put them on either side and so if you look at it it looks like this and that way I'm not touching the second hand and I can release the uh, the Kraken I can unscrew the case screws here um, and this should be in the outward position uh, for doing this, but I'm going to leave it in the inward position right now so the watch doesn't fall out on me. Uh, and grab stuff. Get my tweezers out. I use brass tweezers. If you're interested in me giving a little bit of a, a session on tweezers, I will. Uh, and also, somebody said, I think, can you please give a session on dressing screwdrivers? So you just have to do a military screwdriver right dress. <laughs> so anyway, dressing screwdrivers, so yeah, that could be something I do. Um, now I've got to get it to the other hand here. Hang on a second. I don't want to screw this up. There we go. So I want to make sure this is out when you take the movement out. So just do that. And then the movement should come out nicely. Um, just should just be able to back it out. I'm using my fingernail here uh, and just do this. And there we go. So now I've got the movement resting in my fingers and I'm going to rest it on on here and I got to watch the hands again so so I want to make sure the hands are not in the way and I'm also resting it um, I'm resting it on this here but you know what I may turn the hands so that the pallet fork is on the outside which means the hands have got to be at the three o'clock position so that's probably the better plan right so move the hands to the three o'clock position that would be doing it like this with a bench key. It's not too difficult the job. There we go. Now I know the hands aren't interacting with the movement holder, right? And I can put the movement in like this, just like this. And I don't have to squish that in that much because all I'm doing is is um, taking the uh, all I'm doing is taking out the. Uh, balance here the balance cock so I'm just a little tiny bit of pressure there but not a ton because you don't want the face of the watch to be marred at all so as I look down if you look down on the inside you see those hands are nice and safe and even the seconds hand is out of the way so it's nothing is touching the uh, movement holder now when I remove this the um, the actual balance here I want to use this stick here and put just light an ever so light pressure on the top here so it doesn't bounce around as I'm removing it. So let's just start that. Alrighty then. All righty then. So now I've got my these glasses that I use with an airy loop. This is, I think, the best loop you can buy in watchmaking. So the airy loop, A-R-Y loop. So look that up, get one of these. Uh, I don't think you should do watchmaking without one. So I think if you're going to buy equipment, make sure it's quality equipment. Don't buy crap, okay? So just telling you shout out to Sonny Morehouse out there uh, he's an internet colleague of mine that uh, we've interacted over the years um, good guy great guy does good watch work actually uh, and he's a hobbyist as, as I am uh, but does phenomenal work so he's a, a really good hobbyist I'll say so that's Sonny out there so shout out to Sonny Morehouse and there's another gentleman I won't use his last name but Vernon who is amazing and he's in Europe right now and he's also a watchmaker and does incredible work too so so those two gentlemen shout out to both of them uh, as their watch aficionados so there we go so I get this out of the way so it doesn't get damaged and now I've got the pallet fork here I did take all of the tension off of the mainspring so when I you know, I just let it run out so this should it should uh, there shouldn't be an issue here at all with this. So, but but I'm a little paranoid. So I'm gonna 
turn this, I think I can turn it a bit and then ride it back like this. Uh, yeah, there's nothing left. So I just put take the screw here. You can only do this with the ratchet wheel and then rotate that clockwise and I move the ratchet away and to see if there's any leftovers. And nope, it bled it down completely, which is really nice. That means the watch was um, working it was working quite well. So here's that guilty pallet fork. So I'm going to just take this pallet fork out again um, and very carefully remove the pallet fork. I'm just going to do the inside screw first. I think these screws also have personality. There we go. That's the inside screw. It's already clicking, which means it's not very deep. Just trying to grab this, move it out of the way. So I'm going to make this right and left on my mat to make sure when I put it back, it also goes right and left. And now I'm going to remove this other screw, the next screw here. And this is on the bridge. It's called the bridge, not a cock, because it is in fact a bridge. And again, you put a lot of downward pressure on this and then turn. And you also have to make sure the screwdrivers are the right blade type. Same as the last one. This is not deep at all. So getting this out, I may just lift the whole thing out because this is not deep at all. There we go. So just lift that out with the screw, no problem. And I'll show you what the pallet fork looks like. So remove this pallet fork and you see a little bit of leftover. That's how clean the watch was. So here's the pallet fork, the old one. And at the base of this pallet fork, see if I can, if you can see this, the base of this pallet fork, there's a little, little knobby of shellac that I put in the base to hold that pallet fork in place. And it looks like it's still there, folks. So the shellac is still in place, and I put a little tiny bit of a bend on the pallet fork. There it is there, and there's a ball of shellac in the bottom. So this pallet fork does work with this watch. I just wanted to get a brand new one to see if it worked even better. So I'm going to put this pallet fork, take it, put it out of the way so it's not going to get involved with anything. And now I've got to, to, to look at this new pallet fork and see if it's much any better. Right, so let me just grab this new pallet fork. It's stuck to everything right now. So there we go there. That's taped down. This was inside the, the box you saw earlier. Uh, so I go to Dave's watch parts, and he's a really good guy. Uh, this guy is phenomenal for finding watch parts. Uh, give him the right measurements. Uh, give him the right in, uh, identification of the movement and the measurements, and make sure... You have all that information so that he can find the right part for you. So he decided to take this pallet fork and put it in that giant box so there's no chance of it getting crushed. And and I just dropped that down onto the mat because I don't trust that I can grab it and it wouldn't be an issue. So if I look at that, that's wild. I'm looking at the, uh, yeah, so if I look at this here, this one here, it's got this attachment ball on the bottom and then the uh, the dart it kind of goes out and over <laughs> so I've never seen that before so anyway I'm hoping this works so let's let's install this one and I want everybody to put their hands together and do some praying this has got to work so I've got the pallet fork down on the mat here I'm just going to turn this around very carefully right and I'm assuming the jewel fit, the jewels are fit right. I'm assuming I'm making a lot of assumptions here. And this pallet fork is wanting to flip over on me. Uh, never force anything. So just grab it nice and lightly, like so. And then I'm going to, it's wanting to go sideways on me here, but I'll just throw it in like this for now. And you see I hit that center wheel and that friggin' uh, escapement wheel is moving like crazy. There we go. That's that. And it's look like it's look it looks like a good fit for the jewel. It looks like it fits really well. So if I put this in here like this. 
and get that down like this and to fit this properly you kind of have to nudge it into place and it should fall into place nicely and what I do is I grab the base of the pallet fork and just move it up move it around until it finds home so you kind of have to play with it just a bit um, you can use your stick here to put a little bit of pressure downward pressure on this so that it kind of drops down into place uh, just fart with it until it finds home I might take that screw out on the left hand side because it seems to be well oh, oh, there we go so it found home let me make sure it's freely moving and it is so I'm going to put screw that screw down now that I know that the pallet fork is in place grab the other screw and get that screw down too. I'm having a hard time grabbing it because I got my times five glasses on and I have to flip this over once I get close enough keep a little bit of pressure down on here to make sure that that pivot of the pallet fork stays where it's supposed to be go. I'm going to get a smaller screwdriver so the head fits in nicely. And screw this side down. There we go. So that's in well. And I'm just moving it around a bit. So now what I want to do is put a little bit of pressure on it. But before I do that, I have this, this stuff here. And it's on the other stone I took off. So I'm going to apply a little bit of this on the face of the, um, the pallet fork. So you can see that it's a lubricant. And it's a pretty good lubricant used for, um, for providing or assuming there's less friction on the uh, pallet fork. So, so I'm going to grab one of my sticks here. i got to get new uh, oilers. These are, these are oilers I got a while ago. And this oiler is okay I guess it's bent on the end but for applying this stuff the oiler is not too bad and it's not an oiler like the hockey team so if I just very carefully put a little bit of oil on the end of the stick here and I just want to put it on the face of the jewel I'm going to do it on both sides. That way it spreads around nicely. And there's not much oil on that. If you were to look at that, you can barely see it, but it's there. Just a tiny bit of oil there. So I'm going to reach inside here and apply it to the other face of the jewel. There we go. So now it's been applied to both faces of this jewel. The hope here is that everything works. So hope and a little bit of praying as well, like I said. So now I'm going to put the balance back in place and let's just hope this thing works. So I'm going to put a little bit of a wind on the uh, on the watch. And never good to wind the watch when you're when it's not in the right place so I just have to take it out of here for a second to wind it just a bit I 
I just want to make sure that the watch, um, the pallet fork is going to go back and forth here. So all I do is I just put a little bit of a wind on the watch and I just have to touch it to see if it's working. So let's look down a bit more here and I'll just touch this to see if it works. That is snapping back nicely, so that's good. And I like entering the, the, the uh, pallet fork from the other side, so I'm going to snap it onto that side. And then when I, when I, uh, I said pallet fork, but I like entering the, the balance from this way and then turning it that way. So, so I'm going to do that, and I got my stick here and, and ready to go, and I'm just going to grab the balance here nice and easy or easily is the right English here move this out of the way and now I just have to put this balance in nice and easily into place like that like this and then rotate it and sometimes it takes more than one time to do this so just bear with me let's hope we get some tick in here and I also like to uh, put my finger in the way here so that the balance cock doesn't accidentally fall off. And here it's kind of resting poorly here, so I'm not sure whether that's going to work or not. There we go. Oh, there we go. So I got action on the balance. That's excellent. Now let me put this back and just to make sure the balance doesn't pop up on me, I use this Bergeron stick here to hold that in place. And then get the screwdriver in, and I'm probably not close enough right now, but I just want to put that balance in place really quickly for something terrible happens. And that's in. So that's in, and that's done. So that is good news, folks. It seems to be working well. So I'm going to assume it's working well and case this thing right so there's the case um, and it's going to go in this way and the the actual winding mechanism is out so let's try to case this so the case this i'm going to move the hands to i think i'll move them to six o'clock and uh, yeah move the hands to six o'clock so that's what's happening here the watch stopped for a second, but I think it's got to work itself in. If it if it isn't working itself in, I'll know, and I'll know that the that particular device isn't working. So, so I want to do this so my hands are on the right side, the correct side. I haven't put much of a wind on this either. So, so there we go. Now I want to get my hands underneath like that, like this, so I can enter the case from this side, like this. Um, just turn this till it falls in there and then I want to grab the screws I think this one was the back one they're both kind of the same so it doesn't really really matter but I'll uh, need a bigger screwdriver here uh, grab this one here maybe no nope, not big enough grab this one here And I always turn the movement away from me in case the screwdriver slips. That way I don't have a problem. Yeah, this thing just needs to work itself in, I'm pretty darn sure. Let it run for a day or two. It needs to, it needs, it's got personality, right? This watch has personality. Mother Nature's recipe. Tighten that up a bit, front and back, there we go, and then I can wind the watch, I think it's still in setting mode here, so I'll bring that up to the current time, which is 60 frames per second, no, the current time is quarter to two, it's around a quarter to two, which is close enough. Uh, quarter to two it's right around there 
push that in and then wind the watch this watch here for some reason I can't set this I gotta you gotta push down to wind it it's got personality like crazy there we go now is this gonna work for me it's turning I'm not getting the same amplitude I did on the other watch so I'm not sure why but I think I need to try to work this thing in. It might be the pallet fork. I'm not sure. I think I need to run it a bit and then it'll get going again. Um, these watches can have personality for sure. Let me look and see if I didn't screw something up myself. No, everything is right. The hairspring's right. Everything seems to be right. What the good thing is it's not over banking and that was the issue I had before. So we'll just keep working on this one here with the new pallet fork and we'll get this thing going and going well. So there we go. Anyway, so I'm JD. Um, I did the change and we'll see how well this change takes. If there's an issue later on and I know what, how to solve it, it's the pallet fork. This one does not want to seem to hold its amplitude. Um, and maybe the pallet fork needs adjustment. Uh, hopefully not, because it kind of got stuck there. Stuck on the roller table. Not sure. We'll just get th this thing, like I said, we'll just work on this, let it work itself in, and that's it. So that's JD. Welcome to my channel again. Please subscribe. Please hit like if you want me to do work on your watch. Please let me know, and we'll go from there. Seems to be running okay now. I'm going to put the old part back in the bag here for the uh, for the bounce staff in case I need to use the old part that I had shellacked at some future time. There we go.